Hi Year 12, so just following on from the last video which was all around ATP PC system and the lactic acid system, we're going to now focus on the aerobic system. Um, now, the aerobic system is really, really complicated and there's lots of parts to it and those of you that are studying biology um, will go into this in far more detail, but what my video today focuses on is the um, basics around that, things that we'll be able to use to build on and it really tries to deliver things in a way to you that really highlights what you need to know in terms of BTEC sport so that you can um, be quite specific with some answers should they come up in an exam. So a couple of specific tasks for you to do off the back of that. Um, as with the last video, looking for some really detailed notes on this video, please. So pause it when you need to, replay bits that you'll need to. Um, there is new information in here. It's all new to you uh, in most cases. So make sure that you're uh, really going over things and looking at things in detail. And then if I can just have a copy of those notes so I can see that you've got that, please. Um, either emailed or uploaded to class chats. Complete task eight in your work booklet. So lots of what I'm going to talk about today directly links to the work booklet, which you've got on energy systems. If you've got any issues with that, let me know and I'll get another copy sent out to you. And then I'm going to send you two different exam questions, which both relate to the content within today's video. And then I would like the copies of those, your answers back to me, please, so I can give you some specific feedback on theirs. So that's where we're heading with today uh, and the session today. So just quick recap. If you remember, um, we looked last time ATP resynthesis via PC system and the video really focused on the breaking of the high, high energy bonds between the phosphate and the adenosine molecules, the creation of um, energy through that and then the use of the enzyme uh, creating kinase to break down phosphocreatine to um, resynthesize ATP. None of that should be new to you. If you're struggling with any of that, then let me know and I will be able to support you with that. Um, the advantage and disadvantage of this slides in your work booklet, make sure that you're really familiar with this, please, because those slides are really useful and helpful in really cementing your knowledge. So we focused on the ATP PC system and then spent um, a significant portion of time looking at the lactic acid system. And this is really important to today's lesson, actually, because the lactic acid system, the start of the lactic acid system, i.e. glycolysis, the breakdown of glycogen to glucose and the use of phosphofructokinase and the creation of pyruvic acid, the aerobic system, this is all the same. So make sure that you're really, really happy and secure of your understanding of those systems. Again, if you need anything, let me know and I'm more than happy uh, to continue to support in, in any way that I need to. And again, there's a slide there which links directly to the advantages and the disadvantages of both of those systems. If you um, feel really comfortable with that, have a look at this um, table and there's a page on this specifically in your work booklet as well and make sure you understand exactly where the ATP PC system which we've studied and the lactic acid system which we've studied where they fit in terms of the rate of energy production and the body's utilization of those systems so make sure you're really clear on the understanding of the, the way that um, it changes as you move through a period of time exercising and also the percentage of the maximum rate of energy production. Note the differences, please, in overall performance and the decline in that performance. That links directly to um, muscular contraction, the force of contraction, our ability to deliver explosive strength. And you can see how those that changes dependent on the system that we're using. All right, so spend some time on that. Spend some time in the work booklet looking at those things and make sure that your understanding of ATP, PC and the lactic acid system really fits with what this diagram says to us here. OK, so what we're going to look at now is the presence of oxygen and what happens when oxygen is present and the difference and the changes that that impacts upon and makes different things happen. What that essentially means for the production of energy, how that goes about and how that all happens. Now in the top left hand corner you'll be able to see the the diagram which is the lactic acid system. So we've got the breakdown of the breakdown of glycogen through glycogen phosphorylase, so that glycolysis creating glucose and that enzyme phosphofructokinase be breaking down glucose to provide that ATP yield of two 
and create pyruvic acid. Now you'll remember from the last video that pyruvic acid wasn't something that we were able to store in the body and the um, enzyme lactate dehydrogenase was introduced to create lactic acid. This was all when there was no oxygen present. What happens in the aerobic system when oxygen is present is exactly the same to this point. So pyruvic acid is being created here in the same way that it's been created there. However, oxygen is now present, and I apologize that this diagram's a little bit blurry, but you'll be able to see it better in your workbook. Look. Oxygen is now present, therefore we've got aerobic glycolysis taking place, and pyruvic acid is changed not into lactic acid as it is in the lactic acid system, but into something called coenzyme A. It combines with coenzyme A to create acetyl-CoA. Okay, so it combines, pyruvic acid combines with coenzyme A to create acetyl-CoA. Now, if I move on to the next slide, you'll be able to see, and apologies again, that's a little bit blurry, that then ultimately gives us citric acid. So something called oxalacetic acid is created, easy for me to say, and gives us citric acid. So the big thing you need to understand is that when oxygen is present, pyruvic acid is converted into citric acid. This gives you the stages about how that happens, but actually what you really need to know is pyruvic acid is created sorry, turned into citric acid. And citric acid is very, very important because citric acid goes into something called Krebs cycle. Those of you that do biology will have studied Krebs cycle in far more detail than what we need to do in terms of BTEC sport. Key thing for you guys here now is understanding that the process at the start, glycolysis is the same, aerobic glycolysis is the same as anaerobic glycolysis, until we get to the point of pyruvic acid and pyruvic acid is com com uh, is converted into citric acid in the aerobic system so krebs cycle this is terminology you'll hear an awful lot so here we have our citric acid yeah and citric acid goes into krebs cycle now what's really important and i've done this in a table here you will pick up marks in your exam if you know this table Okay, if you understand what goes into Krebs cycle and what comes out of Krebs cycle, you will pick up marks. It's really important that you get this knowledge here. This is all taking place now in the mitochondria. So in the matrix of the mitochondria, Krebs cycle takes place. And citric acid goes in and carbon dioxide is produced and removed. So there's our first out. So citric acid in, carbon dioxide out. Hydrogen's created in Krebs cycle, and hydrogen atoms are produced, and they travel down the electron transport chain, and there'll be more on that later. Okay, so hydrogen goes down the electron transport chain, and we get a yield of 2 ATP from Krebs cycle as well. So we've already had the 2 ATP from the glycolysis, in the same as the lactic acid system. Now we're getting an additional 2 ATP out of Krebs cycle. Yeah, so at that point, we've now already had a yield of 4 ATP. So, like I said, really make sure that you, you take this, you commit this to memory. If you get that table committed to memory, you will not go far wrong with any sort of question around the aerobic system. I thought that hydrogen atoms are produced and head down the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain, need to know that that takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria. Yeah, so within the mitochondria of the cell. And that is where hydrogen is converted into a yield of 34 ATP. 34 ATP from the, uh, the electron transport chain. And we also get water as a byproduct there. I'm not going to go into that in too much detail here now because it's really, really complicated stuff. And I would rather do that when we get back to school because we will have time to do that. But for now, make sure that you've got a real clear understanding of what goes into Krebs cycle what goes out of Krebs cycle, where hydrogen goes in terms of the electron transport chain, <laughs> being able to identify that that generates a further 34 ATP, which gives us a total energy yield from the aerobic system of 38 ATP. Two from a glycolysis, two from Krebs cycle, and then 34 from the hydrogen atoms moving down the electron transport chain. I'm going to leave it there for today because... 
I just wanted to give you the basic overview and I'm going to ask you some other tasks in the coming week or so which will really cement our knowledge further but if I just finish with the slide that was at the start in terms of the tasks for today so you know what you need to do with the video hopefully the two exam questions will help um, you to really uh, secure your knowledge as well and then I'll happily take any questions from you all as well thank you for all your hard work and the good work that you're doing because I can be getting some really impressive stuff through from you well done